Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce you, uh, to welcome you to this screening of Summer of 84. Summer of 84 is directed by three incredibly talented filmmakers who were at this festival three years ago with a movie called Turbo Kid. Tonight's movie is very different, but you are going to love it. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage Francois Simard, Anouk Wassel, and Johan Carl. The Viking phone. <laughs> well, you know, it's more intimate than darkness. Oh! Thank you so much, Sundance. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy to be here again. It's like crazy. We feel so blessed. We want to thank Gunpowder and Sky and Black Light, Bright Light Pictures. That they're the reason we're here. They're amazing. We want to thank the cats and crew that bled and gave all their love so that we could make this movie. And we want to thank you guys. You're so awesome. Uh, so yeah, we came here like three years ago with Turbo Kid and it changed our lives. So we're forever grateful for Sundance and we want to thank Charlie, the programmers and the, the, the whole Sundance family for having us. Uh, yeah, we love them. <laughs> So, yes, this movie, Summer 84, is very different, but it was made with the same amount of love, the same amount of passion. So, I really hope you like it. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, we're still nervous. We, we had our premiere yesterday, and we're, like, every time, we're super stressed out. Really hope you like it. And lastly, we want to thank, we want to thank each and every one of you, of you to, for being here tonight. We love you, that it's amazing, and of course, that's why we'll be giving free hugs after the screening. Yeah. Oh, please, don't be shy. Take us on this offer. I need love. I need so much love. All right, let's do it. Keep the first question is, this is uh, such a different direction from uh, Turbo Kid. What made you decide to, um, to choose uh, so much darker subject matter? Uh, we want to explore, we, like, Turbo Kid 2 is coming, but uh, we're, we're writing it right now, but um, we, we didn't want to become the Turbo Kid people. So you do Turbo Kid 2 right after Turbo Kid 1, and then you do the third one, and the fourth one, and one and then it's that. So we, we, we want to explore, we want to try different style. We, we want to do sci-fi, we want to do any type of style and mix styles together. So it, it was, summer was a great opportunity for us to like try something. Yeah, as long as we're passionate, when we read the script, uh, oh my God, the ending was like, it's, it's so different than anything else uh, that we, uh, see, like uh, in movies, so we're like, we need to do this movie, uh, nobody else, and we're like, my god, um, we're so happy to, like, have the chance to explore that you What are some of the challenges of having three directors on this production, and what other challenges did you have during the production to overcome? <laughs> um, the fact that we're three is, is easy, because we've been directing together for over 15 years as a trio, so... Uh, we we get really prepared in prep, and uh, when we're on set, we we split jobs. Uh, I'm with the actors. I know it's with everything that's artistic. All the head of the department plus she's the water brain, and Pasqua is behind the camera uh, with the storyboard and the DP. But um, I know is definitely the water brain. Like she she's the master of um, of ceremony, if you will. Um, the challenge we had on summer is that we had a lot of underage actors and we shot it in Vancouver and the limit that they could work was midnight uh, for the American actor and two in the morning for the Canadians and actors but Vancouver doesn't get dark until 10 so all the night shoot we had like two hours to shoot and it was it was complicated but we found solution and the kids were so great so amazing to work with that 
it made it easier. Um, somehow. Speaking of it, we got Graham here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, those great people. Please. Oh, yeah. liking the film. Um, there is a possibility to go back. Um, we were like brainstorming just for fun and thinking like the uh, DV goes to college. And then <laughs> <thank you. laughs> but um, we don't know. Like every film that's been made is a miracle because it's so hard to, to um, be able to make an independent film and to get financing. Oh, I, and, uh, so you never know. If it's possible, we'd love to do it. But thank you so much for rolling your film. I'm noticing that there's a big surge of these kind of movies, movies or shows that come out that are really inspired by things from the 80s, and Stranger Things, It, and, now, and this movie. And I was just wondering, you know, from classic 80s horror films or just any other sort of media from the 80s, that might have inspired this movie. Yeah, no, there's um, definitely The Burbs was a huge influence, as Stand By Me was a huge influence on, on, on this. Yeah, Greenies, Monster Squad. Um, but to tell you the, the whole story, oh, thank oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> now we see you guys. But yeah, it was in 2015 uh, at the premiere of Turbo Kid in LA at Next Fest. Uh, we met Matt, the writer, and he pitched us the story. And we're like, yeah, 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 it's right in our alley. Like, send us the script. And we worked on the project for one year. And then out of nowhere, we saw the first poster of Stranger Things, and we're like, no, <laughs> they did it first. But suddenly, everybody saw that there's a public for that kind of movies, and we got the green light like this right after. So, yeah, we're grateful. And, and you know, Stranger Things doesn't look like it, and it doesn't look like Summer of 84. There's multiple ways to do to tell stories that are similar but very, very different at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, we didn't have the same budget. I <laughs> love the music and can't wait for the soundtrack, so I will be uh, hoping to purchase that sometime uh, this year. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and for Graham, what was your favorite uh, sequence to film uh, in this project? Favorite to film? That is, that's a really difficult one. I think I'm gonna give that to the first couple days on set. Um, when we filmed all of the treehouse scenes, um, it was the four guys, the four kids, in this room, this tiny little box that was boiling Ice hot. It was this big. <laughs> um, and we filmed all of those scenes in two days. Yeah. Um, and, and those guys are hilarious, by the way. We could, there were so many takes that we just ruined because we couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. But <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we, we, we did deals. Like, they, they were having so much fun together. So we would do two takes for me, but for us, and one take for them where they would go absolutely bonkers. So if ever we're lucky that there's a Blu-ray, the outtakes are beautiful. <laughs> and some of those moments for them are in the film too. Oh, it's true. We get a lot of their crazy outtakes in the movie. Like a bunch, a bunch of the stuff between Woogie and Eats is totally just them going off each other. <laughs> Ad-lib stuff. But we really wanted them to become friends in real life, so that happened. Obviously, and so we're very happy we uh, saw the chemistry uh, taking form, and yeah, that's where we get the lead. How difficult was it to cast the, the child actors, and from how large a pool did you draw from? Huge. It, it took a long time to cast. 
we because we knew we didn't we wouldn't have a lot of time on site, so we needed very very strong actors, and we got. And um, also we needed from the script we needed very certain type of people, so it took a, a long time to find everybody that would look the right part and add the talent to do it. And we were so lucky; those kids are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> you, you owe me twenty dollars. <laughs> Were you guys at all influenced by Tangerine Dream? And Graham, can we hear a little bit about your previous experience before coming to this film? Yeah, for sure. For me, like for us, Tangerine was like a big thing when we was a kid, and we're, uh, I'm still we're still used to Tangerine Dream. So yeah, you can really feel that like risky business yeah. vibe yeah. for sure. But well, especially with the team with with like the relation with the two, uh, with Nikki and uh, and Graham, for sure. Um, I'm assuming by previous experience mean other, not previous, yeah, okay, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> um, I've been, I did, <laughs> um, I did a bit of um, work on The Good Doctor on ABC. Oh. I was in the first couple episodes of that in the flashback, I played the younger version of Weed, um, John Murphy, um, and then last year I did some stuff on Fargo season three. Um, Will you would take your, I know I know the carrier better than you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, a bunch of stuff earlier than that as well. Um, <laughs> Oh wow, that is a great question. I'm stumped. Um, I think both brought their own challenges. Different, they were very different. Both we tried to have a heart in the middle. And this, in Turbo Kid, it was Apple. In, in this film, it's Woody. That's the heart of the, of the story. Um, and but no, it, it is you as well. It's the group of four kids. I know I'm a little bit stunned. It's a very good question. Well, I will try again. I think uh, summer before uh, was more challenging because it's more serious, and we're a bit stressed because uh, in trouble kid, it's over the top in the city. It's a comedy, and you can. Uh, like get away, mm. but this uh, if we fucked up on this one, it's more uh, uh, it hurt more. But uh, we're very happy, we're very proud of what we have done. So yeah, that's uh, that that's, was a challenge. That's such a better answer than what I was going for. <laughs> you did a much better job. I don't know where I was going with what I was saying. Also, the music was really good. It, 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 I'm learning sound effects for my class right now. It was really good. I really liked the music. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone, please.